Welcome back. Happy Tuesday, everybody. This is Thread Talk, and I'm your host, Teresa. And I'm Denver. And today, it's going to be our first no theme episode. A little bit of a mix up going on this week. Yeah. So we asked you guys on Instagram what you prefer, if you prefer the themes or um, just kind of mixing it up and whatever we find this week, the kind of like the best stories that we find. And um, over 50% of you said, mix it up. Yeah, and we've had a lot of stories that we've been trying to categorize, and those categories haven't really been getting filled up. So we thought, why don't we take a little bit of a mashup of everything that we've been working on versus some really new ones versus some really good ones and kind of put it together, and then we came up with... To theme or not to theme? I love it. So we've got a really good, really good story set up for you guys today. I'm excited to hop into it. But before we get into it, yes. there has been something that we made a mistake of <laughs> a couple episodes ago on our Valentine's Day episode. Uh, for those of you who've been following along, we have the answers for you. What did Teresa and I do for Valentine's Day? We do apologize that we yeah. forgot to put it on the end of that episode. <laughs> we try to like put our personal stuff at the end of the episode and really give you guys the reddit stories at the beginning and then if you want to stick along at the end that's your discretion uh, but we kind of just forgot we got a little carried away and now we're three episodes later but we have the answer for you so the loyal followers i <laughs> had found a candlelit sympathy in toronto symphony, symphony <laughs> to go to and i was booking it for valentine's day and then when i was selecting the options one of them was a tribute to taylor swift and Teresa is the biggest swifty ever so if you guys are watching this on youtube like tag taylor swift or something <laughs> uh because <laughs> Teresa just absolutely biggest swifty ever so it was a sympathy symphony a symphony <laughs> my bad i'm so terrible with that um so i booked dinner i booked dinner reservations at this unique restaurant maison shelby in toronto if you know of it it was really good mm -hmm. like actual candles that were like melting as we were having dinner really good french vibes great food and then after you know actually during Teresa's like this place is really good because i told Teresa, i was like yeah like it was so hard to get a booking for this uh like there was either an early one of january 30th or there was march 30th uh, so i was like yeah it was so hard to get a booking so we're gonna have to do valentine's day early because a slot opened up and uh Teresa was like at dinner she's like this doesn't seem like that exclusive like it's not that filled up i was like no no no, it's not this it's after this she's like wait what there's a second part and it was like a tuesday yeah it was like it a was tuesday or wednesday a or something work night yep. like <laughs> so random so i was like i just thought it was gonna be dinner and that's it exactly and dinner was amazing don't dinner get me wrong great. but i just didn't think it was something like oh my gosh like it was booked out for all of february i was like that's really odd and she's like what is it i'm like don't worry it's gonna <laughs> blow your mind you're absolutely gonna love it and you'll never be able to guess what it is and she started guessing and i was like oh nope, nope i thought nope. it had something to do with cats or taylor swift <laughs> yeah she did say it just have something to do with taylor swift and did have to lie about that but i had part. no I was idea like, nope. i was like no what? idea so then we were driving around. We're looking for a parking spot. We pull around a church. It was at a church. So Teresa's like, why the fuck are we at a church? I thought he was going to make us get married. Exactly. So, <laughs> so confused. <laughs> so we find parking and we walk in and the lady is scanning our tickets and I show her the tickets and she lets us in. And I'm thinking while she's scanning tickets, I'm like, please don't say what this is. And then we walk in and Teresa's like, oh, I've seen the ads for this on TikTok because that's where I found it for the sympathy, sympathy, symphony, symphony, Jeez. my bad. Um, so she didn't say it was a Taylor Swift theme. There was no sign that it was Taylor Swift. So I was like, OK, awesome. I was already happy with she that. She was already happy with it. But I'm like, this is going to be the greatest surprise ever. And we go and find our seats. And then the chick comes on stage to introduce the musicians. And I'm like, please don't say that it's a Taylor Swift night. And she doesn't. And I was like, yes. And then they come out with their violins and their cellos and whatever <laughs> else they, they have. And uh, they start doing the first song. And then it takes about 30 to 60 seconds. And then at some point, Teresa looks at me, like whips her neck around to the side. She's like, is this Taylor Swift? <laughs> and I was like, yep. The whole night's a tribute. She's like, oh, my God. It was amazing. I literally cried. Like literally cried. Yeah, she did when they, some tears. Yeah. I think it was the second song. Oh, when they were playing Cardigan. I was yeah. crying. I was just like, oh my God, this is so nice. Like, yep. So we spent an hour. date ever. It was really good. Teresa yeah. was super happy. It was amazing. And then we found out that, uh, I guess... What is Mark to us? Brother-in-law, brother? My brother-in-law's brother took his Swifty girlfriend yeah. and they were there the exact same night and we saw it on Instagram yeah. and we were like, no way, we were there too. And yeah. it, was, it was pretty funny. 
So yeah, thank you guys for being the loyal followers. And uh, for those of you who wanted to know that story, I hope you found it useful. For those of you that are new, I am sorry. On future episodes, we will keep our personal life to the end of the episode. (laughs) So now we're going to get into some awesome Reddit stories to theme or no theme. All right. Who wants to go first? Okay. I'll go first. Is that okay? Yep. All right. I'm excited for this one. This is a good one. This is actually from Best of Redditor Updates. Um, and it was nominated one of the best, I, I forget which category this one was from, but one of the best ones for 2023. Um, title is, I fell in love with my married neighbor and then I babysat his kids. Now I'm questioning my feelings. Okay, so first of all, I'm new to Reddit. So sorry if there are any mistakes or something. I obviously can't talk about this with any of my friends or my mom, but then I saw a Reddit post on TikTok and I thought this would be a good place to talk about this. I'm also going to post this in a couple of different places based on what came up when I googled best Reddits to post on for advice. So also sorry if this shows up multiple times. Finally, I know you're all going to judge me, but at least try to understand my side. Thanks. So I'm a 34-year-old woman, and seven months ago, I had a messy breakup with a long-term boyfriend, so I moved in with my best friend and her husband in a house, and we are all renting together. It was then that I met my neighbor, who I will call Kay. He helped us move our stuff into the house, and I was instantly smitten. We live in the suburbs of a major city, so we both ended up taking the train into work at the same time each day. I knew Kay had a wife and kids very early on. He talked about them often and pictures of them on his lock screen, social media, etc. However, initially it started out very innocent, like a silly little crush. He is handsome and funny and sweet. The first time we rode the train, he asked me about my job and seemed genuinely interested in what I was saying, which is something my ex never did and is something we fought over a lot. He is always doing things for his kids, like bringing home treats and stuff for them and staying on the phone with his older daughter the entire ride to work because she needed a pep talk before school presentation. It was just so easy to imagine how lovely and attentive Kay would be with me because he is like that with everyone else. Kay has never said or done anything to imply that he has feelings for me yet, but we are genuinely friends by now because we talk on the train, which is about a 20 minute ride almost every weekday. I have never had trouble getting the attention of men and with the basis we have already, I know that we could easily become something more. I also learned shortly after I developed feelings for him that his wife is someone I went to school with and I was surprised because they are polar opposites. He is funny. She is dry. He is exciting. She is cautious. He is a little dumb. She is very smart intellectually. Look wise, this feels mean, but yikes. I just don't think that their personalities fit well together at all, and I can easily see Kay getting stuck in a relationship because he's just too nice. The issue is that yesterday evening, Kay knocked on my door and asked if I could watch his kids for a bit. This was, of course, no problem, and I said yes right away. He told me that his wife got into a car accident while away on a business trip, and because she is pregnant, he was super worried and had booked the next flight out to go see her. They don't have any family in the state currently, so he asked me to keep an eye on them for a few hours while a family friend drove several hours to watch them at night. Now is there is where the issue came in. These kids were an absolute nightmare. There were three girls and the oldest was your typical bratty preteen times a thousand. She was rude and didn't respect my authority at all, arguing with me about everything from dinner, who had to clean up, to what movies she was allowed to watch. I even heard her call me a bitch under her breath a couple times. The middle was rowdy and constantly wanted to play loud, messy games even when I told her no. The youngest was mostly sweet and quiet on her own, but she joined in whatever drama the middle wanted to create. It culminated in me agreeing to play hide and seek with the younger two and ended up getting locked out of my house. When I went back and tried to convince the oldest to let me in through the back screen door, she pretended she couldn't hear me and put her headphones in. Thankfully, the family friend arrived a few minutes later and let me in, and then I went home. This makes me sad because before now, I would often dream about being a stepmom to Kay's kids one day because of how highly he would talk about them. Now I want nothing to do with them, but at the same time, this is further proof that Kay and his wife are not happy because children from a happy home 
Do not behave like this. I just want to have a relationship with Kay, but I do not know if it is possible because his kids and I would not get along. And this is even before a potential divorce where their mother could easily get them to hate me. I really love Kay, and I know that we could have a beautiful relationship if I pursued this. But this has really shaken me. I just wish I had someone to talk to about this, but everyone in my life would judge me. Yeah, no wonder they're going to judge you. You're a psycho. <laughs> You're delusional. Kay's just being nice to you. He's got a wife. He's got three kids with a fourth one on the way. If he wanted out, he'd be out. He doesn't want out. He is enjoying his life. What? <laughs> this girl... <sighs> She's she's romanticizing this idea of him. I don't think she actually loves him. I think she, it's like an she infatuation the idea of him because he has because not expressed nice. any interest in nothing. Her. Like I thought this was going to be a cheating story at, at the big, <laughs> with the title. I thought this was going to be a cheating story. No, this is a delusional stalker story. He's a little delusional, yeah. Just because he says hi and he chats with you on the subway, obviously they're going to chat like they're neighbors. Who wouldn't chat on the way yeah. to work and stuff like that? He showed you no romantic interest Nothing. at all. And you're like, his kids are nightmares. Now I can't I can't think. You, What makes you think he's even going to cheat on his wife with you? Obviously, exactly. he's happy in his relationship. She's pregnant. He... he she got in a car accident. She he flew states over to go see her. Like exactly. What about that makes you seem like you have a chance? An girl? opening or anything? Wow. This is cringe. She's delusional. Yeah. So there, there's an there's update. an update, right? There, I, for <laughs> it to be a best, there's has to be an update. I feel like someone's gonna read the story and she's gonna get busted someone's gonna put the dots together of like three kids the car accident the pregnancy and stuff like that i feel like she's about to get found out okay the interaction so the update is an interaction like a text message interaction from k and op k blank and the girls are okay thank you for watching the girls op of course anytime let me know if there's anything else i can do k thumbs up emoji Okay, link to the Reddit. <laughs> yep. Okay, is this you? Okay, because if it is, we need to talk. I promise you that I have absolutely no interest in leaving my family for you. I'm sorry if I ever gave you the wrong idea, but I don't see you as anything more than a neighbor. I don't think we should be friends anymore. OP, wait, can I call you? <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, exactly, bro. Oh my god. Oh, oh. so cringe. I feel embarrassed so for her. So cringe. Just so many wrong life decisions. Okay, yeah. you're falling in love with somebody who's showing no romantic interest in you, and then you're posting it on the internet and everything like that. You thought you were gonna get advice. No, you just got found out. Oh I god. kind of feel sad for her. I, I feel know. a little sad for how delusional she is. Yeah, I don't know. I, she, she like made a point to say that she never like seeked sought sought male validation her whole life but like i don't know it's it it's surprising to me that this is the first case where she's kind of taking friendship out of context and yeah i don't know but i think she thinks every guy is interested in her yeah she can get anybody she wants it, it has to stem from that even to think that he's married and blah 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 you know, I still think there's a chance. If I wanted this, yeah, it was a possibility. Yeah, I, I don't think know. That's the first thing. Yeah, wild. Top comment. This is the best, best of redditor updates I have ever read. <laughs> yeah, that is the best update that I've ever yeah. read. What did she just screenshot her text message and post it there, or is it like just a copy paste? Um, it's a copy paste here because it's not the original post. That's it's so on best of redditor updates. Funny. Oh my God. Like he yeah. just buy on the Reddit story. Like there's too many details. Maybe if you left out the accident and stuff like that, maybe if you said for whatever reason I had to like you, oh yeah, there's I know. so it's many details easy that easy to, easy to come back on yeah. you. The world is a lot smaller than you think it is, especially with CEO search engine optimization seo seo my SEO, my fucking CEO. I'm like <laughs> my bad <laughs> you post things people around you actually find it on the internet more likely than somebody off in india or something like that it's more likely to be the people near you who are going to find the stuff on the internet yeah. that's how the internet works yeah ah oh. 
All right. That was a good one. Mm -hmm. That was a good start. That was a good start. Moving along to my story. Before I get into my story, I want to say thank you to this week's sponsor is Artuno. So if you guys are watching on YouTube, you can see this beautiful Thread Talk sign that we have here with the pink highlights. If you're not on YouTube and you're on Spotify, check us out on YouTube once in a while. But thank you for them for giving us this beautiful sign of our logo. They are a company that does acrylic signs. So if you know somebody mainly in the automotive space that is a car enthusiast, uh, they would like to have a sign. This is great for gifts. If you have any birthdays coming up uh, you can use thread talk for $15 off your checkout that is a-r-t-u-r-n-o dot c-a we'll also leave a link down below here just want to click on that and use thread talk for $15 off so thank you for Artuno for the beautiful design and sponsoring this episode now let's get into my story all right this one is actually a recent one it's from 14 days ago Am I the asshole for not wanting a guy included in our mom friends group? I, 35 female, am a single mother of two kids, five and three. Both of my kids are in daycare and over the years I've built a solid friend group with a handful of other mothers and kids who regularly get together for playdates. The father of my kids is not in the picture at all and my relationship with him is non-existent. This is 100% for the best and I am currently in therapy to deal with a lot of things that my ex did to me. This friend group has literally been a lifesaver for me at times. A few months ago, there were two new kids that started to come to the daycare center. They are similar in age to my kids and were placed in the same classes as them. I noticed that their dad was the only parent to ever pick up or drop them off. He would try to make small talk with me a few times, but I am uncomfortable around strange men, so I would be polite but not engage further than that. Our mom group has a group chat that we use to support each other and to arrange playdates. A few weeks ago, one of the moms texted the group chat that she was adding this new dad to our group chat because he wanted to have his kids participate in playdates outside of daycare. I privately texted that mom and told her that I don't feel comfortable with a man I don't know having my contact information and told her that she should have consulted all of us before deciding on her own to add him to the group chat. I then texted the rest of the mom and told them that I want to keep a separate group chat without the other dad because I don't know him and it makes me uncomfortable. This resulted in a lot of divided opinions with about half of the moms agreeing to a separate chat and the other half just saying it'd be too difficult to keep track of and it was wrong to exclude another parent just because he's a man and that I'm being unreasonable. The mom I texted privately replied to me that she has talked with his dad numerous times and that he seems like a nice person and a good parent and that his kids shouldn't be excluded if they want to hang out with their friends outside of daycare. She told me that I was being difficult and making this all harder than it needs to be. The other day when I picked up my kids, my five-year-old was upset because a bunch of his friends were talking about a play date that he wasn't invited to. I texted the moms about it and that they said they were getting the kids together with the new dad and didn't invite my kids because of how I was acting. I told them that it was rude to exclude my kids like that and a couple of the moms told me to grow up because that's exactly what I was trying to do to this dad and his kids. Mm -hmm. I'm at a loss because these moms have been so supportive for me in the past and as soon as this dad comes into the picture it's like they pulled a 180 and don't seem to care about me at all there are still other moms who agree with me but now it's like our friend group has been divided by this am i the asshole oh man okay i think this girl has some trauma yeah, she did say she's in therapy she clearly yeah. does have some trauma for her ex i think there's obviously a reason she feels this way yeah absolutely um so i don't think she's an asshole um i know overall vote is probably asshole oh overall vote is asshole yeah but it's not a clear-cut case of assholeness i don't think yeah i i just feel like she is trying to keep boundaries like trying to protect herself she's trying to protect herself and i respect that yeah. yeah she's in therapy yeah but um but yeah it's definitely not fair to the new dad to the new dad and, you and also, to the moms who want to be friends with him exactly like, that's you agree fine. to be in the group chat okay if you agree to be in a group chat where you are not the administrator of, then you are giving permission for your contact information to be given out in the group chat to the administrator, to the lead person in the group. Sure. So there's kind of a balance there. Like if you didn't start the group chat and you joined it, then you are that 
just by that action, you need to be aware that other people in the future may be added to the group and see your contact info without your permission. That's something that you just need to be aware of. If you're not okay of that, then you shouldn't join. I don't know. I don't really think it's like that clear cut. Like sometimes when I start group chats, like I'm not, I'm not like the admin. No, I know. But if you start the group chat, then you're the one like you can set the rules, whether people are going to be added or not added and stuff. I don't think so. Yeah. Maybe. Um, I don't know if people see that, see it that way. Maybe but, not. Like, but I just feel like if you're putting yourself into a group chat, like you are kind of giving permission for other people to be joining in the group chat and stuff like that. Like, I don't know. I don't think there's a clear cut boundary on this, but also like you, it doesn't say your name. Well, it depends on the group chat, I guess. Like if it's just text message, like it's just a random phone number that's in there, not to save as a name. I think the bottom line is that she doesn't want to be around men that she doesn't know. And that's fine. But then you yeah. can't be upset when you get cut out. When you get excluded. You got to yeah. explain that to because your kids. your trauma shouldn't be... Other people's problems. Yeah, exactly. It shouldn't be put on to other people and they should be able to live their life. So if they want to be friends with this dad and their kids are friends with his kids like that's that should be allowed you shouldn't have a problem with that and you can't get upset when you're gonna be excluded yeah you said you didn't want to hang out with him he's trying to arrange a play date for his kids yeah i'm sure you can't be upset when you're not invited i think they didn't invite you because they knew you felt uncomfortable exactly i don't think they did it maliciously no i don't think they did maliciously either it was of her own making yeah but yeah it's a tough one yeah, I wouldn't say she's an asshole, but like, no. it's, I get she it. She kind of did an asshole move, I guess. Yeah. She's trying to exclude the dad just because he's a guy, which is not his fault. Yeah. He's a single parent as well. It's not necessarily like, is it the mom's only group chat or is it the, the parents group chat? It seems more like it's a parents group chat yeah. to help arrange with the play dates and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. And it just usually tends to be moms. Yeah. Any one of those moms could be a psycho. <laughs> And she has your contact info. Yeah. Like you're just I, like she has trauma and that's why it's against guys. But like realistically, like any one of those people could be dangerous to have your contact info with too. Yeah. And that does make him an automatic bad guy because he's a guy. Yeah. Like this is for your kids. Like you, you had to start somewhere with, with your friends, with yeah, the other moms. Exactly. Like, Are all the moms single point, moms? I don't know. But at one point you had to get to know them. So... You know what I mean? Like, there, you always start at ground zero at some point. So, yeah. Yeah. It this is, is a tough kinda, one. Yeah. I can see people being on both sides of the fence here. Like, obviously, some people were like, in, like, with her. She was the whole group wasn't against her, just some. Yeah. But then you can't be upset when yeah. you're going to get excluded out of your play dates no, and exactly. stuff like that. Yeah. And it's up to you to explain that to your kids. Yeah. Top comment. You aren't the bad guy for not wanting your personal contact info shared with a person you do not know, regardless of the gender, or for not wanting to participate in activities where people you don't know are present. This is a boundary you are welcome to set, Mm -hmm. but you do not get to dictate what the other moms do in the group. Those who criticize you for setting this boundary are wrong, but it sounds like they ultimately respected it by not inviting you to the group where the dad was present. The only person you can dictate gets to be in the friend group is yourself. Mm -hmm. Trying to exclude anyone else for any reason when it's not a group consensus makes you the asshole here. Set your boundaries and enforce them. But remember, boundaries do not force a behavior or action on others. It's about what you will accept. Quotations. I will not be participating in activities or group chats where men I don't know are present. This is perfectly acceptable and enforceable, Mm -hmm. quotations. I do not want men I don't know in our group chat or group activities. This is not a boundary. This is trying to control the group. Don't get upset when people respect your boundaries because what you really wanted was for them to pick you over someone else. You are the asshole. Yes, that was perfectly said. That was perfectly said. You can make that decision of whether or not you want to continue to be in that group chat or not. And yeah. you can, yeah, exactly. But you can't try to force them to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah. Yeah. Good one. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Nice I'm choice. enjoying this, this, uh, this no, theme. no theme theme. Yeah. No, no theme, theme or theme. theme? Yeah. What is it? To theme or not to, to theme. I'm enjoying this to theme or not to theme. <laughs> Me too. All right. I know Maybe. Jack's enjoying it. Yeah. You guys are checking us out on YouTube. Jack is taking a break from his biscuit factory yeah. and he's just taking a nap. Bon or not. Get back to work, Jack. Gotta pay your rent. (laughs) Okay. 
This one comes from Am I the Asshole? It was posted two days ago. Am I the asshole for telling my daughter she has to understand that choosing this wedding date would result in my family not going? Two-ish years ago, my brother, my nephew, and my mother were in a car accident. My mother died instantly. My brother and nephew passed away the next day. My family was small. Me, my husband, daughter, parents, brother, wife, and two nephews. Their loss was devastating for my life and for everyone, even worse for my father and my sister-in-law. One year ago, my daughter, Betty, 25 female, was proposed to by her fiancé and preparations began. During this process, they chose the date based on the day they met, seven years ago, and the day is exactly two years since the death of my brother and nephew. I tried to talk to her about moving because it is still a very difficult day for our family and even for myself, but she insisted, saying that the venue had the date available and it would be perfect because all of the other available dates aren't so good and wouldn't be so important. I respected her decision. Recently, she sent invitations to everyone and, as I predicted, my sister-in-law, my nephew, 24 male, and my father responded that they would not attend and despite not telling her, my family and my sister-in-law told me that the day choice was an offense to them. I decided to remain neutral at some point. I confirmed my presence and my husband's. Today, my daughter called me unhappy that no one but us confirmed. My husband doesn't have family on his side and her family part was empty and she expected everyone to go on that date, even more so after she explained the reason to them about the date. They still refused. I tried to be supportive, but I said, in quotations, love, this date is difficult even for me, but I will go to your wedding, but you have to understand that this choice of date has consequences and you would have to deal with the consequences of your choices. She exploded at me saying that everyone was against her, it's not her fault the dates coincided, and everyone could make an effort to go a few hours for her, but they decided just not to, and I was basically saying, I told you so. She hung up on me without answering, and we still haven't spoken. My husband said he understands me, but I should have stayed away from it. Am I the asshole? Absolutely not. She couldn't have said it any better. Yeah. Listen, this is, there is nothing harder in life than loss especially when you are losing someone who was not ready, was not aged and old and was about to leave this earth. Like yeah, you a tragic it. car accident where multiple people in your family died. Like that's a horrific day. It's hard enough just to live your life on every other day. Never mind an anniversary date where you're reminded of what you lost. And you think that people want to go to a wedding? Mm -hmm. No. You are delusional. You are not respectful. You could have picked another date, another venue. If you cared that they were there, you would have done that. Yeah. So you reap what you sow and your mom couldn't have explained it any nicer. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. She said, she was so I'm going to support you. I, I will come, but I don't think this is a good decision. And Exactly. She did. Like, yeah, I would say I told you so too. I would have <laughs> said it harder. Yeah. Like she's, your mom is hurting and you're lucky that your mom is so gentle to explain it like that to you because yeah. some other people wouldn't have been so nice. Exactly. That yeah. is extremely tough. I get the significance of the date for her. I get it. Met, and it's, just, like, it's tough. It sucks. But I understand the significant for you. But yeah, there's there's meeting someone significant and then there's losing like your whole family from Literally, a tragic car accident significant, three people. which makes your anniversary date insignificant. Yeah, like it does. it's significant to you. But if you care about them, it is no longer significant. Yeah. Like, absolutely. Like if that was to, we are planning our wedding. So if you are new, you can stay along for future updates. But if we were planning our wedding and we knew that there was a tragic date in our family that people would be hurting yeah. on that date, we're going to book that off our calendar. We're going to know that's not an option. We yeah. can't do it on that date. Also, like I would never think to do it on the day that we met. Like. I just feel like it's kind of like a redundant date, to be honest. Well, I mean, you can't even... I don't even remember the What's date our anniversary date? November 5th. It's October 15th. No, it's November it's 5th. It's October 15th. <laughs> What's our engagement anniversary date? October 12th. Oh, look at you. Now you know it. <laughs> Fast you too many times now. 
So I don't know. I've never heard of people like celebrating the day that they met before. I, I can't mean, even remember I, there's what there's so many other si- Yeah, me either. There's so many other significant dates. Like there's nothing ro- there's nothing wrong with remembering and celebrating the day that you met. But when your family has had yeah. such a tragedy uh tragedy like you need to understand that. Yeah. <clears throat> Top comment, well overall vote is not the asshole. Top comment, not the asshole. I mean, you told her exactly why this would happen and she didn't listen. I think she was more upset in front of you than at you, if that makes sense. She's venting, but also kind of thoughtless to think that everyone would just swallow their grief to watch her get married on a really painful anniversary. Exactly. Yeah. People like to go to the, people like to go to the graveyard and pay their respects and stuff. They're not going to a freaking wedding. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's only been two years too. That's it's still fresh. That's really fresh. It's another still. thing. If this was like fifteen years ago, happened when you were a kid and stuff like that. Like also, like I I wouldn't want my like our wedding anniversary to also be, be on that the date. date. Yeah, that's messed up. It'd be messed up for the future too. Yeah. 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 Hopefully she she comes to her senses. Yeah, I wonder what happens. Yeah. All right, moving along. This one is from one month ago. It's from the Am I Wrong subreddit. Am I wrong for choosing my dog over my girlfriend? No. Can you ever be wrong for that? No. All right. So I've been with my girlfriend for three years, and we've been talking about living together since we thought that it was the right time due to my job and money stability that we have. But the only problem for her is my dog. I took my dog in from a shelter 10 years ago when he was one years old. I was sad and depressed and suffering from my dad's death. He died in a car accident. In that time, I was feeling alone and useless. So my friends suggested to me to take on a dog so I would have some company and a best friend that would help me. I was a bit skeptical, but a few weeks later, I agreed. I went and looked at some shelters, and as I passed by him, when I looked into his eyes, I knew that he was the one for me. My friend, who went with me that day, always said, he chooses you, and not vice versa. And that has to be true. When I chose him, the people there told me that I was making a risky choice, because he was very aggressive and scared. But those eyes convinced me, so I took him without hesitation. It was tough. I don't want to lie, but at the end, he became loyal and adorable with licks, belly rubs, and protection. Since that time, we became inseparable, and I don't have to be ashamed to admit that he saved me and my friends are right. Now, coming on to my girlfriend. We never had any major issues or fights because we have the same interests, hobbies, and we have a very similar character. She always got along well with my dog, even for the first times that she was at my house, she was a bit scared of my dog due to his size. My dog is an oversized pit bull terrier of 110 pounds and is very jacked. (laughs) But then Bruce, his name is Bruce because I'm a huge Batman fan. So I called him Bruce, like Bruce Wayne. Went along with her and loves her gentle touch and laying around her. So she and my Bruce never had anything wrong and our relationship was pretty good. Then a week ago, we seriously started talking about living together and I agreed with her about this decision. Here's where the real issue comes. Six days ago, we started looking at the right house for us and that was near our jobs and was more room for future kids because we want them. I jokingly said that Bruce will be our first son and would be a good example of the children to take care of. And in fact, she laughed, but then said, well, obviously your dog isn't coming with us because he's not part of our family. I immediately understood that she was not joking and we started arguing. I told her clearly that Bruce is a special person for me and I would never in a million years for any reason abandon him because he is like a brother to me. The argument went on like this for three hours and she said, come on, you're joking, right? You can't love a stupid animal more than a real person. I will admit that I got pretty angry and I told her to get the fuck out of my house immediately because I cannot tolerate anyone talking shit on my Bruce like that. And she realized what she said and tried to apologize, but I was too angry and asked her to leave. 
When she was leaving, I clearly told her that Bruce is very important to me because he saved me in my darkest period, and I will forever be grateful to him, and that I love him. So if she don't like him, she can kick rocks and get the fuck out of my life. Period. Maybe I overreacted and was too harsh, but I really think what I said was true, and I absolutely love my Bruce. Now she is trying to apologize for what she said, and it's been three days since my phone is blowing up with calls and texts from her, and I don't know what to do. So am I wrong? Absolutely not. We are, in case you guys haven't noticed, but we are an animal-loving household. Yes, we have two cats. We, we have two cats, and we love our animals. And I don't, these animal stories just like make me mad, m- more angry than any like human stories. Right. <laughs> because it's like, in what world would he leave his dog? N- no, no world. You're delusional. If you think someone's going to get rid of their pet that has been around before you, for you. I don't even know why she would have assumed that. No, I, who assumes that? Who assumes that's that? That's a like, red that's... flag to just say that uh, he's not coming with us, right? The dog what stays do with the mean? house. Was he a couch? He stays <laughs> in the house. What? It's an animal. You don't leave your animals behind when you move. Maybe she has some childhood trauma where like she moved to a new place one time and she had a pet and it got left behind with the house. And her parents told her that we don't take pets when we move. Maybe, that, maybe that's maybe her she's norm. Got some trauma, and that's but, her norm. But like, that's not normal. That's not normal at all. <laughs> the animals move with you. A hundred percent. Like, well, obviously, he's not coming with us. No, obviously he is. <laughs> obviously he is. Why Duh. would he not? Why would he not? No, that's so ridiculous. And yeah, okay. Even if the the dog like didn't have like healing um like emotional um attachments for him yeah even if there wasn't even if there was none of that like still you still don't give up your dogs coming with me no and people who who get pets and then leave them behind i think are literally the scum of the freaking earth like you are you deserve a beautiful seat in hell because that is that like literally talking about animals makes me so sad because I don't know what it is. They are just helpless, you know? You are their entire lives. They are they are all that you know. And for you to just leave them behind like that, like I hate that. You deserve hell. You deserve the worst. You don't deserve every him. Day. No, you don't deserve him. There is no coming back from this either. No. There's no coming back to this either. As soon as you said that, I would never trust you around Bruce Wayne again. I would never <laughs> trust you with my Batman. Because yeah. like <laughs> I can't trust you to be alone with him. I can't trust you to not let him yeah, out exactly. the door and let him run away. I can't trust you to not drive him to a shelter and say he ran away or something like that. I can't trust you at all. People are disgusting. Like some people would like take the pet and go drop him off at a shelter or go drive him off to a back road and just abandon them and then say that they ran away and stuff like that. So I would never trust you ever yeah. again around my dog or anything like that. Yeah, so exactly. that's it. Done, cut, clear, out of my it's life. Done. Goodbye. Yeah. yeah. It just makes me like it's, my mind is boggled knowing that she just assumed that. Exactly. Like, it's like ugh, what goes on through people's minds? I have no idea. Oh, this does remind me of Teresa and I's retirement plans. What Teresa and I would like to do for retirement. Okay. We want a cat cafe. We're going to open up a cat cafe and we're going to adopt kitties and kittens. Maybe we'll expend this to like dogs and stuff like that. But I want to like help animals and pets get like second homes and maybe like a little hotel like a doggy cat hotel and stuff like that that's my retirement plan i I just want to have like a little cat cafe a little apartment above the cat cafe and i'll be very happy yeah that would literally make me so happy yeah me too that'd be amazing (laughs) have like an infinite amount of cats could be the crazy we help them find new homes and stuff like that yeah yeah Or, or just you know property and just eight golden retrievers yeah, I, I've always said I wanted eight golden retrievers. When I first met <laughs> Teresa, I just wanted eight golden retrievers. I'm like, is that all at one time, or is that like through your lifetime, or you want eight at once? Like, is that like what do we get? Are we getting eight at once, and we're having eight golden retriever puppies, or is it like we get one golden retriever, and then like he's two years old, and we get another one, and we get like a new one every other year? Like, how is this eight golden retrievers working? Where are they all coming from? I never thought it through. I no, just, I just knew eight, I wanted eight. Just eight. <laughs> Like you only have two arms. You can only pet him <laughs> two at a time. <laughs> Teresa just wants to be smothered. She wants to lay down on the ground and have eight golden shivers lay on top of her. <laughs> yes. Uh, that was before I was a cat person. Now I'm happy with uh, eight cats. You're happy with eight cats? 
<laughs> I would love do- a golden retriever as well, but there is an update. To Ooh, this. okay. So the top comment just says exactly what we talked about. Mm-hmm. But so the update. So we talked for a few hours about the situation and we were both completely sincere about our thoughts. The first thing I want to say is that we broke up officially. The other thing is I discovered some things about her that I wasn't expecting and would never expect. She never even liked Bruce. For all these years, she was faking her love for him. She isn't a dog person and never liked dogs, and my Bruce didn't make any difference. She was seriously convinced that I would leave my Bruce for coming to live together with her, and this, for me, is the most painful part because she knows all of our story, and she didn't care about it at all. She told me, choose me or your stupid dog, and I chose my dog without hesitation. Good. I don't know what to say. Seriously, I'm just speechless. Some are saying better now than later, but I can't believe she was faking the love for my dog. I mean, Bruce never hurt her, never chewed on anything of her things, and was never too cuddly with her, so I can't really understand why all this hate for my dog. My heart is in pieces, and I don't even know what to think. At least she never hurt him, but I don't know where all this hate comes from. But then I think of all your comments, and you guys seriously made my day, so thanks again, and I'm glad that there are still people who love dogs and respect them. So thank you guys all for the support. It sounds like she was jealous of the dog, like the whole relationship. Mm-hmm. Jealous the of whole the time. attention, yeah. Yeah, the whole time. Jealous that he had such a special place in his heart. Exactly. But like there's room, there's room for it's always room. More than one. It's always love. Room. Like yeah, it's always room. So sad. Yeah. Well, glad she's gone. Bye. Bye, Felicia. Bye. All right. Your turn. All right. This one comes from Am I the Asshole? It was posted 18 days ago. Am I the asshole for not delaying our rebuild for our pregnant neighbors? We are planning on doing a major rebuild on our old row house and finalized everything around two weeks ago. We are excited as it has taken us nearly 1.5 years to get here. We texted our neighbors this weekend to let them know construction would start at the end of the month for approximately three to four months. We are not extremely close with our neighbors, but always pleasant. One neighbor came by to talk to us after we sent the text and expressed disappointment in the timing because his girlfriend is pregnant and due next week. We ourselves were never told of her pregnancy until December and that she was due sometime in February. He also asked about our rebuild on his own and my partner mentioned it might happen sometime in April, which was our original start date. We told him how sorry we were for the timing, but obviously it wasn't intentional. Ten minutes after he left, we received a text asking if we were available to talk the next day about possible solutions and if we could delay the rebuild by three to four months. We agreed to meet, but told him delaying was not possible because we already have another place lined up for us to live in, contractor agreement, etc. Needless to say, the meeting was not ideal. The girlfriend cried the entire time while apologizing for crying and hormones. She said she has not cried as much as she has in the past 24 hours, as she has in the past two years. She's worried how this will affect the baby because she's stressed now. She couldn't believe that we just sent them a text message with only a month in advance and that we should have come talk to them in person as this was the first she was hearing of this. Did we even put ourselves in their shoes? They have nowhere else to go. They are concerned with how this affects their own sleep because the baby will be up at night and they need to sleep during the day and they won't be able to with the construction. If we did the rebuild three months later, then it would at least be summer and they can go outside to escape the noise. They also kept repeating, what if we just say, no, this can't happen. We obviously feel for them as new parents expecting a baby and we all live in old row houses so I get how noisy and disruptive it will be. We told them we would get them a build schedule so they could see what days would be the noisiest and they want us to ask a contractor if there can be quiet hours from 12 to 3. I don't think that is realistic and don't know what else we can do to amend the situation. Am I the asshole? Um, No, I mean your renovation is not dictated by anybody else it's a sucky situation being a new parent sucks and yeah having your neighbor renovate does suck but you have no control over whether they renovate or not sell your home move out i can think of one solution 
for both of them. If I was the person who was renovating and it's like, I've already booked this, I've already booked that, I can, if they are willing to, delay it, but you are accepting the costs mm. of the delayance. Yeah. I can't cancel the contractors, so you have to pay them the X amount, and then you also have to pay to relocate me, uh, pay for my cancellation of that. Yeah. If you are even willing to. Me, personally, I, I wouldn't even be willing I to. I could see that being a compromise if you are willing to, if they want to pay for it, if they if they want it delayed and stuff like that. I wouldn't even be willing to. Like, like honestly, like, yeah, you're in for a rough time no matter what's going around with you, the baby. Mm -hmm. The baby doesn't care about anything. If anything, you want the baby up during the day so that he sleeps at night. You yeah. want loud noises going on during the day. Good One, night. your baby's going to get used to it. Two, maybe it'll keep him awake and you'll get better sleep at night. If your baby can't sleep during the day because there's loud noises going on, I don't know exactly no sleep schedule stuff, but maybe Madison would have, oh, this would have been a great story for Madison being yeah. a guest on, but that's okay. Oh, shit. Um, the, the sleep schedules and stuff like that, but I, I would think that it's not a terrible thing if your baby is up all night and it's actually a good thing if your baby gets used to loud noises because that's mean that they're going to sleep easier in the future so no, yeah i don't I, know about that but i don't know i think that's how i think i could be wrong let me know if in the comments if you think i'm wrong but yeah the, their neighbor being pregnant is not their responsibility yeah. it's not their problem exactly so this one was originally in the entitled people episode oh but yeah I, uh... they are entitled <laughs> Uh, we didn't have time to go through it, so I thought it was a good one for the no theme episode. If you guys haven't watched our title, check out the last episode, no, two episodes ago for all these crazy entitled people. So check us out. Um, Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more. I think it is a shitty situation, but unfortunately, when you live in like a townhouse like that, like just it's like we're like we live in a condo. We... We have to be prepared for stuff like that, you know? Yeah, like, like I work from home. Yeah. I like there's construction a lot too happening. You just have to kind of go with the flow adapt. and we're, adapt. We're filming a podcast here. We want to keep out all the outside noise so that you guys have a better audio experience, but we can't control if there's renovating during the day that's going on above us. Like they have full rights to do that. Exactly. Yeah. You have to sometimes it is what it is. Yeah. You don't have to adapt to your neighbors. No. Not at all. Update. Thank you, everyone, for your response and insights. Much appreciated. We do share a wall with them, and part of the rebuild includes insulating the entire house. We found out work will go on from 8 to 4 p.m. each day with a 30-minute break for lunch at 12. The builder is fine to give an overview of what will be done and when. After that, I think we have done our best to assist them during this time. Yeah, that's the most that you can do with that. It sucks for them because they live in a townhouse where the wall is connected brutal it sucks but your baby will adapt yeah and you'll adapt too you'll adapt too it'll be fine yeah maybe you'll actually get better sleep at night yeah okay uh overall vote was not the asshole good top comment it's a baby it's going to make noise all on its own yep it can now make as much noise as it likes without disturbing you next door and without its parents being worried about it doing so this is a massive overreaction from your neighbors. I would suggest you stop being quite so accommodating and concentrate instead on your own plans and carrying them forward. Not the asshole. Exactly. Just break off communication with them. You don't have to listen to them whine. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it's like a huge overreaction. I do understand like the and they have a lot of emotions going. Yeah. It doesn't seem like they have any of their kids, so they have no idea what they're getting in for. Yeah. They're just preparing for the worst, and they're like, this wasn't in our plan and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's a shitty situation, but, you know, life throws you lemons. You need to adapt and add some sugar and make some lemonade. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you just have to accept the fact that they can't. They can't uh, change their plans, and that's it. Unfortunately, yeah. if you if you're so against it, you you have a month's warning to move out and find a new place to live. I think you're like three months out from the pregnancy anyway. I don't know. You ha you have time. It's not happening the next day. You have time to make some adjustments. Yeah, if you really want to. Yeah, and they were kind enough to give you that month in advance. They didn't like, need to give you any warning. Anything. Yeah. I mean, unless they legally had to uh, something, maybe they did. But other than that, they, they may, maybe they didn't have to. I don't think they would have Because I think but... sometimes you do have to let your neighbors know that you're planning a, a renovation mm, maybe. or something like that. Like I think it's in the bylaws sometimes. Mm, maybe. I'm not exactly sure. Could be. Mm -hmm. But yeah. All right. Well, back over to me. All right. This one's coming from the Am I the Asshole subreddit. It's from 22 days ago. 
Am I the asshole for breaking up with a girl because she told her friends I have a small penis? (laughs) (laughs) I have been dating a girl for about three months. We finally hooked up and I thought everything was fine. Now for context, I consider myself to have an average size thing. (laughs) <laughs> perhaps on the smaller side of average not entirely sure if that's too much information but i will admit it looks pretty small when soft <laughs> obviously i'm posting this from a throwaway because it's kind of embarrassing she's always been super opinionated on penis sizes uses terms like small dick energy and oh. etc But I never thought anything about it or let it affect me. As I said, I consider myself average, not small. And if you ever pull anyone up on mocking penis sizes, it's, ha ha, you must have a small dick. So I just never bothered. So anyway, after the hookup, a few days later, we were hanging out with her friends after work for drinks. I can feel the weird atmosphere like her and her other girls have been talking about me, like sharing a strange smirk with each other when they first saw me and her friends are cracking indirect small penis jokes (gasps) at me, making me super paranoid. I felt embarrassed, but it didn't show. On the way back to my apartment, I asked her if she shared intimate details about me with her friends, and she said no, she would never. I'm not proud, but as I felt she wasn't telling the truth, later that night I went on her phone while she was in the shower and went straight for her girls group chat on the WhatsApp. And man, I tell you, it was the most emasculating thing I had ever been through. Like an hour after hooking up, she was roasting me about my size, telling her girls how small I felt in her hands, how her (laughs) dildo at home was at least four times bigger and thicker, that she was disappointed. She even said, quotes, Aaron really ruined things for me, which that's probably the dude she saw in the past who is super hung and makes (laughs) average looking look small for her. This girl was even saying, I had small balls. So now I can't let it go. And it's messed with my self-esteem massively. I asked her to leave when she got out of the shower. And I've been ghosting her for about four days now without an explanation because I'm so embarrassed to even talk to her. No doubt I will get some mean comments mocking me by dudes. But please have some sensitivity to this subject. Do I confront her about this? Do I forgive her? Have any of you guys been through this? Have any girls done this? (laughs) I really feel like she really didn't value my privacy and I wouldn't dare share intimate details about her. There are things I could say about her body, but I never do that to another person. So am I the asshole for breaking up with her? So wait, did he break up with her? Yeah, he broke up with her and, well, he didn't break up with her, he ghosted her. He kicked her out and ghosted her. Oh, okay, so he just ghosted her. The title's her. breaking up. Okay, but he's asking if he should confront her about it so she doesn't know why he's ghosting her. So he had four questions at the end. Do okay. I confront her about this? Do yeah, I yeah, forgive yeah. her? Have any of you guys been through this? And have any of you girls done this? <laughs> well, are you asking me if I've done it? those are the questions i'm not asking you anything i'm just reading the reddit post this is an interesting one that's funny it's super hilarious i feel for the guy i mean i don't think i've talked to my friends about i mean i don't know yes the girl's the asshole here it's kind of normal nowadays all girls talk about that stuff guys talk about other girls in the group chats and yeah, stuff I think like it's that normal. it's normal all groups of friends talk about their sex lives with uh, their other groups of friends and stuff like that. I'm sorry, man. Like, sorry that happened to you. It's not your fault. She's an asshole. She is the asshole. It's normal. But yeah, she's still the asshole, man. I don't know 
if she's the asshole. No, she's like, talking shit on him and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, but that was after their their first hookup. Yeah, and the, the problem so is, So that was probably though, really early well, on. Yeah, and the problem is that, like, she's obviously had experiences in the past when he's coming up short of her previous experiences. So, you, dude, you could go find a girl who has only had smaller than you if you're if you are average and you're not tiny i mean every guy watches porn you have a general idea of where you stack up and stuff like that like you know so like if you if he says he's average i well like he's probably average and yeah. stuff like that she's probably just had some experiences with some really big people in the past i mean personally i i, I don't know why some people need to have it so big i don't know <laughs> i'm not a girl but like i feel like that could only hurt i don't know I don't want to get too far into sex on this podcast, but I'll just leave it. We there. have family listening. Exactly. So I'm just going <laughs> to, I'm just going to leave it there. Good. He does have an edit for a little bit more details. Before I get into the edit, the top comment is not the asshole. Find someone better. Your girlfriend and her friends are not people you should spend time with, which I would agree with this. Yes, everybody does it, but. To go into this detail and all that stuff those are some pretty shitty people and stuff and yeah it's time to find someone new who doesn't do that to you the people that do that are usually the young teenagers once you grow up and you have mature people they're not really doing that in group chats anymore yeah does it say their age no it doesn't say their age okay yeah i mean it's just time to move on like definitely don't you're you're gonna feel embarrassed she's gonna feel bad probably if you confront her and you're only three months in this no you is... did the right thing just ghost her yeah just, just ghost her. Yeah. she was an asshole you are not ghost her move on you'll find somebody who doesn't treat you like that and you will be happy i still don't really think she's an asshole though i don't know i just feel like after the first hookup like that could have been like a couple weeks no, in yeah i don't think she's an asshole for talking about it i think they're all assholes for the small dick energy and the okay group yeah. chat and the cracking small penis jokes all the time i just think pe people who crack that small penis jokes all the time are just rude and like wh why is that even a funny thing and yeah. stuff like that like do you do you, do you think guys go around making loose vagina jokes uh you know what i mean and saggy tit jokes or something I like mean, that like I think the, they do yeah and those guys are assholes yeah. so yeah people yeah. that make those things those people are assholes yeah like she's in the group chat and she's saying what she's saying uh they're just roasting they're roasting him about the size and how small she felt in her hand and how the dildo's <laughs> bigger and how her his balls are small like yeah dude ghost her and move on she just that's it. Go stare and move on. You'll be happy. Yeah. Yeah. Just leave. Three months. Not that long. <laughs> yeah. There isn't an, an edit for more details here. I was reluctant to share my size, but since so many Oh have my asked, God, please. 5.5 5 when erect, which is okay. average. Everybody's aiming for six, but most people are a little less than that. Just over two when soft. Everybody is tiny when Who soft. Who cares about when it's soft? Everybody is a grower. That's just anatomy. <laughs> I know the average is around five to six inches, but hey, I've heard girls say average is still small. So I guess it's small. It all depends on their previous relationships. Yeah. Most girls do not want larger than that. I would think, but I don't actually know. <laughs> I think 5.5 is average. I feel like that is average. Yeah. Oh mm. my God. There is an OP comment. Oh my God, please. To the top comment. Yeah. Yeah. Going to see them in the workplace. It huh? will be awful. What? Apparently, these he, the top comment says, your girlfriend and friends are not people you want to spend time with. He says, going to see them in the workplace. It will be awful. He works with them. Oh. Time to find a new job. That, that no, for is, real. That Get is out. brutal. That's the number <laughs> one reason why they say Quit. don't date people from your work. Because when yeah. it goes south, you still have to work for them or work with them. And it sucks. Quit. Bye bye. Move on. <laughs> Change, move states, move countries. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, man. <laughs> Damn. Poor uh, guy. <laughs> yeah, poor guy. <laughs> poor fucking guy. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> that was good. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Now, on to your next story. Yeah. Okay. This one comes from Reddit on Wiki. Am I the asshole for telling my son that if he is uncomfortable about his sister not wearing a bra, then he should cover up too? My 33 male 
daughter, 16 female, got into an argument with her brother, 15 male, because she sometimes doesn't wear bras around the house. She still covered up, but she just wears a t-shirt instead. She said that wearing bras are painful and it makes her uncomfortable, so I didn't mind it. However, my son recently started expressing his discomfort and saying that it makes him uncomfortable and she should start wearing bras again. My daughter heard this and got upset and saying that she wasn't bothering anyone. He said that he was bothered by it and that she should cover up. I told her that if he's uncomfortable, then maybe she can put on a bra when she leaves her room. She got upset and told me that it's unfair that she has to wear a bra when her brother doesn't have to cover his man boobs. He got upset at this and accused her of making fun of him. I told him that she wasn't making fun of him and told him that it was a fair statement. I told him that if she's also uncomfortable, then he should start wearing a t-shirt when she when he leaves his room. He started crying and accused me of calling him fat, which confused me. All those words never came out of my mouth. I felt bad and wanted to let my son know that he misinterpreted what I meant. But when I went to talk to him, he just told me to leave him alone and wouldn't stop crying. So I decided to give him some space. My wife told me that I know how sensitive our son could be about his weight and I should have been nicer about it. This made me feel extremely bad and I tried to apologize to him again, but he just ignored me and wouldn't even speak or look at me. I thought I was just being fair, but I don't know. Am I the asshole? No. Free the nap. Free the fucking nip. Free the nip. Preach, I don't know. Preach, like, preach, preach. okay, this is a little bit difficult because you are dealing with teenage children. The, the that'd be like grade 10, 11. You're dealing yeah. with teenage kids and stuff like that. And yeah, I mean, brothers and sisters, you shouldn't be sexualizing your sister at all, anyway. So whether yeah. she wants to wear a t-shirt, a hoodie, a bra, or anything like that, that is a no place for you to ask her what she can wear. She's gonna be comfortable. And yeah. If, if you can't handle the fact that you're asking for that and then she tells you, yeah, well, if you're not putting on a T-shirt makes me feel uncomfortable, you can't handle it. That's your own freaking problem. If you don't like somebody making fun of your man boobs, like put a freaking shirt on. You can't get offended when somebody snaps back at you when you are being offensive to them or being rude to them. You, you have no place to ask her to put a bra on. You have no idea how com- uncomfortable they are. They're yeah. uncomfortable. Yeah. I mean, I literally never wear bras anymore. Anymore, I haven't I in bought years. Her so many bras, they're all brand <laughs> new, sitting in a drawer. She doesn't even wear them anymore. I haven't worn them in years, and yep. um, no one will ever fucking tell me to wear a bra. Exactly. You don't want to wear a bra. You don't have to. No. Dude, just uncomfortable because he's seeing a nipple for the first time. Exactly. I, I think it's also part of North American culture where the, we, we over sexualize yeah. the female body. If this was in Europe, yeah. They don't wear bras over there. They don't even wear tops over there. And yeah. it's normal. Like it's normal. beaches and stuff like that. Like it's because of how we sexualize the female body exactly. in North America. But absolutely, uh, the daughter should not be forced to wear a bra. And if the son has a problem with that, uh, don't look. And uh, nothing wrong with obviously the daughter's snapping back. She feels offended. She's going to yeah. fucking hit you back in the the mental area. Where it hurts. Yeah. She, she, you try to tell her to wear a bra. She's going to snap back and tell you to cover up your man boobs. You know, you pissed her off, you know? Yeah. She, yeah. Good on her for sticking up for herself. Yeah. And good on the dad for sticking up for her too. Yeah. He didn't say you're fat. He's 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 standing with his daughter, which he should be. He said it's fair. It's if you don't fair. like looking at her boobs, she doesn't like looking at your boobs. Exactly. At the end of the day, boobs are just lumps of fat. Exactly. It's the exact same thing. No, they're gorgeous on women. They're not gorgeous <laughs> on men. So I wouldn't don't. No, no. Don't say they're the same thing. They're not not the same but thing. But it is. No, it's not. When, when men have man boobs it's because they are overweight in general and it's getting floppy there women have beautiful <laughs> breasts and that you will be skinny and have them you'll be large and have them men will only have man boobs when they are overweight that is just how it is yes i know that thank you <laughs> they're perfectly round sometimes sometimes hair shapes sometimes so many different forms and they come in all different ways <laughs> okay <laughs> Top comment. I had this exact situation happen to me, only my brother is two years older. I came down to dinner one day when I was 14 or 15, just wearing a tank top. I have A cups, so I didn't think it mattered whether I wore a bra or not. Well, my brother flipped out. He ordered me to go put on a bra, which was incredibly weird of him to say, so I was like, no. He wouldn't let up, got my mom involved, but she tried to have my back and told him to just drop it. 
At a certain point, I realized he wasn't going to stop and I was getting very weirded out by having the whole family discussing my tits at the dinner table. So I just went upstairs and changed. I'm still incredibly uncomfortable when I remember this event and it was over 20 years ago now. My brother and I have never had a close relationship. For a while, when we were kids, the only time he would talk to me was when he had something to criticize about my appearance. In brackets, you need a haircut. Why is your hair so frizzy? You need to shave your legs. You look stupid in that outfit, etc. Guys, just leave your sisters alone and don't talk about their tits. Ugh. Yeah, that's disgusting. It is disgusting. I'd kick him in the fucking balls. Yeah. yeah. Number one rule. Don't talk about your siblings anything. Guy or yeah. girl. Don't talk about anything. Let them make their own decisions. Don't tell them they need to do anything. Don't tell your brother he needs to wear longer shorts. Don't tell your sister she needs to wear more fabric. Don't fucking look at your sibling, man. <laughs> Just just stay on opposite ends of the house. Yeah. <laughs> Don't even look at each Don't other. Don't make any judgments or anything like that. Yeah. God damn, let them live. Let them free the nip too. Especially like, bro, I can only imagine how uncomfortable bras can be. Like, oh, I, like I can imagine that yeah. they're very uncomfortable and stuff like that. It so is. be comfy. Be, be comfy and do what you want to do. Yeah. Like I dread uh, when I have to go into the office. I, like, can we just like normalize it like in society so I don't have to wear it to work? so annoying go to europe <laughs> go to i know i should we should move to europe to the netherlands spain netherlands no i saw some really good things uh from people on tiktok promoting spain recently no let's go to warm weather Hanigan. houses for two hundred thousand canadian or something no. like that no Hanigan rains all the time i just remember getting I sick love it. when we got rained on i love it 2019 Teresa lived in Hanigan for five months it's giving it gave like cozy vibes and i loved it almost didn't go I had to threaten to break up with you one year into a relationship because you didn't want to go on exchange in school. I never had the opportunity. So I was like, if you don't go, if you give up on that opportunity for me, for me, I'm going to break up with you out of spite because you didn't go. I won't break up with you. If you go, I'll be there. I'll come visit you. I'll be there when you get back, but you need to go have this life experience. You are a completely different person since you had that life experience. You are a hundred percent a different person since you did that. And if you didn't do that, we wouldn't be, we probably wouldn't even be living together now. Uh, maybe we would, cause it's been like seven years, six no, years, been, yeah. but like we moved in together right after like a year back. after you came, uh, a year after that or something like that. No, like half a year, at I the end of that back, year, October, yeah, it was that year. Yeah. And like we wouldn't have moved in together or anything like that. I doubt. Yeah. We just would have been at different, different, uh, places, I think in our relationship, but, uh, yeah, yeah I'm definitely very huge. glad I did that. That was huge for you. Yeah. You're welcome. So I, I basically, so I had an opportunity to do an exchange in university in the Netherlands and um, Denver and I had just started dating, I think about a year in and I didn't want to leave him. <laughs> Love me so much. I didn't want to leave him. So I, I said I didn't want to go anymore and Denver kind of was like, if you don't go, I'm breaking up with you. Yes, that was exactly what it was like. <laughs> he ended up he ended up visiting me um for a month. Six weeks. Oh yeah, it was six weeks. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Six weeks. So it was a long time. Did a whole Euro trip. Yeah. That and is on our other YouTube page if you want to check that out. Yeah. Um actually don't look at those videos. They're very old and we we didn't know what we were doing. We got like so. hundred views, eighty views. <laughs> don't go so watch old. those, please. <laughs> we got no views. <laughs> <laughs> that was the that was those videos were the start. A start of our career. Yeah. <laughs> they were. And that's where that photo was taken. If you're on YouTube, the Amsterdam. photo behind us. That one's Amsterdam. Yeah. Honestly, best place on earth. Like when we did our Euro trip, I know we're going off topic now, but when we did our Euro trip, oh, like we God. went to I think like nine countries and the Netherlands was still my number one. It was amazing. Yeah. It so, was so dreamy. She started in Han again. And then I came and visited. I got sick like the second day because we had a bike back in an ice rainstorm. And then I got sick. Oh, yeah. Sick. So, so I showed up a week early because you still had an exam or something. Yeah. Yeah. And then we went out a little bit on the town, went out for a couple of drinks that night, waited till Teresa was done her exam. Then the day after her exam, we went, busted into Amsterdam, flew over to London, stayed in London. I, I love motocross and there's a MXGP races that were happening. So we kind of planned our trip around three of the motocross races. So we went to uh, London, explored London, went to the dirt bike race, and then we went and bust it to Belgium. Mm-hmm. We spent like eight hours waiting to go across the tunnel yeah. because our, our bus got flagged, which is okay because we were actually like, we uh, it was okay because we planned to be in 
uh, Belgium like eight hours early before we could even check into our Airbnb. So this way now, we just went right to our Airbnb, the best Airbnb. Belgium's a little hidden gem. Yeah. And then from Belgium, we drove to the next race weekend from Belgium to the Netherlands, at the bottom of the Netherlands. And then we went back, back to the... To Honigan. Honigan. She had another exam. And then we flew out from Amsterdam to Vienna. Yeah. And then from Vienna to Trento, Italy, Mm -hmm. another dirt bike race. And then from Trento to Rome. And then we flew from Rome to Barcelona. Did we? Yeah. Right. We flew out from Rome. We flew flew from Rome. And then we went to Barcelona. And then we trained it from Barcelona to Paris. Oh, why did we do that? That was just the most logistic way. Huh. And it was, cheap. it was like a $50 flight to go from oh, Rome to Barcelona. I don't remember. Yeah, your tra- flights are so cheap. And then from Paris to Switzerland, Geneva. Geneva. And then we cut out the Germany part of the trip and then just Geneva back to Honigan. We had another exam. And then we did Amsterdam for a few days. And then I flew home. Yeah. It was sad. Yeah. <laughs> Teresa was crying. Yeah. <laughs> Of course I was. We just spent six weeks together yep. nonstop. Non-stop. Like literally not even a five minute break. No, never. Let's go to the bathroom. The bathroom in- breaks were the only time we were apart. <laughs> not, not even in, in Paris. Paris. <laughs> there was no tour to the bathroom. We were in the smallest little apartment. We had to carry our luggage up six flights for like oh the attic of this apartment. It was a twin <laughs> bed, a tiny little kitchenette, and a bathroom that didn't have a door on it. That oh was my like, God, it was there was brutal. no sink in the bathroom. It was a toilet and no. a shower and you had the kitchen sink was the sink yeah. the only benefit to this it was the cheapest place we could find and had a beautiful and you view could see the view of the eiffel tower yeah. from the tiny little window yeah oh we for uh, we were I, broke yes. though <laughs> i want to do uh, a euro trip part two for uh, half of our honeymoon yeah but then Teresa just wants to go to south italy well i wanted I to i want to do, do like portugal i want to do spain again france again i want to do greece i just feel like because our um our wedding is already going to be in italy we're all going to be there for a week yeah like to do a whole other euro trip after that is going to be exhausting that's true wedding update for you guys we are almost about to put a deposit down for our venue yes <laughs> and then we have to book everything else <laughs> i want to go to the yeah. maldives for the second part of our honeymoon yeah maldives. i mean we're already like halfway there so it would make sense from right? italy but it's still like a really long trip. Like we would have to stop in Dubai. Yeah, but let's just do it. Let's yeah, we'll it. see. We got. I'm gonna. I gotta price it out. All right, it's my story, right? Let's move along. We got off topic. Uh, Did you finish your story? Did you read your story? I don't remember. I don't even know where we were. What was your story? I. Oh yeah, mine was a bra story. Yeah, yeah. we were talking about <laughs> free the nip. Yeah. We got sidetracked. Yeah. <laughs> let's get back on track here. Am I the asshole for charging my son rent? This one was from 28 days ago. I need some advice here. My 17-year-old son has really taken off with his live streaming career in the past six months. He's doing so well that he's been able to upgrade his room into a pretty awesome streaming studio. We're talking multiple monitors, TVs, top-of-the-line streaming gear, the works. Turns out he's pulling in around $3,000 per month, which is really impressive for his age. I originally thought he was just blowing his allowance and lying to me, but I have seen his bank account and it checks out. He didn't actually tell me that he was making money until I pressed him, which was weird, but he came clean and showed me his kick and twitch profiles. Given his new financial situation, I thought it might be a good idea for him to start paying a small amount of rent, like $600, something comparable to what a two bedroom should go for, given he has 500 square feet for his room, an ensuite, and a lounge for his sole use. I see it as a way to teach him about the responsibilities of adulthood and managing his finances. However, my wife is not on board. She thinks we shouldn't ask for rent, period, and that it's our job to give him a roof regardless of external circumstances plus he utilizes her wi-fi and electric to stream i suggested that we put away his rent money for his future but still no bueno now he's finished high school early and has been streaming over his gap year before he decides if he wants to go to college 
This has led to some pretty heated discussions between us, with my wife accusing me of being too harsh and not appreciating our son's youth. On my end, I feel like I'm being realistic and preparing him for the real world. I had to pay rent as soon as I made an adult wage when I was growing up. I'm conflicted because I want to help him learn real world responsibilities, but I also get that he's not technically an adult yet. So am I the asshole for wanting my son to contribute a bit to that household now that he's earning his own money? Mm. I don't know. I obviously, like me personally, I would not charge my kid rent. Yeah, this is a tough one. Um, But I, I get it. I get where he's coming from. Yeah. Um... But I think, like, I think the intention is what? Yeah, like, he says that he wants to put it away for his future. He doesn't want to actually take his money. He wants to help him yeah. learn responsibilities. So it's not like, I think my my son should pay rent because he's making money. No, it's more of, like, I want to take his account, and make him pay rent, put it into a savings account, and then he'll have that in the future and stuff like that. So his intentions are good. I get it. I guess. But you, you have to have, you ha- your wife has to be on board with that decision. Of course. But I, I don't know. The savings account, like, doesn't seem like, well, actually, he did say he's blowing his money. Is that what he said? No, he thought he was blowing his savings, his allowance. Okay, so he, I don't get what, what this guy wants. Is, is the real intention for him to like do it as a savings or is it to teach him he says that he wants to put away his rent money for his future to help teach him about managing finances which i think is fair like your kids paying your kids making three grand a month he's 17 years old he would just blow that money now i think you can make recommendations i don't think you can enforce anything I think you yeah. you just have to make recommendations like you're making all this money. I recommend you do this. But at the same time, like he's not an adult yet. So you still do have control over his bank accounts and stuff like that. So I don't know. I'm so I'm conflicted. I don't know what the right thing to do here. Like, I just feel like if he wasn't making this money, they wouldn't be charging him rent. No, he only wants to charge so... him rent because he's making money to show him to teach him financial responsibility, which is interesting. I don't know. I'm going to lean more towards asshole on this. I don't think he's the asshole because he's not he's not making it. He's not forcing anything. That's an idea that he came up with that he think that he thinks that they should do. But he's not enforcing anything. I don't think he's the asshole for suggesting you should put some money away for your savings. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough it's because tough. he is a kid. You could gonna... you could say like listen if you live under this household and you make money here's what we're doing with that money it is his money but at the end of the day you're the parent to help and you're like okay so this is how much you make you know we're going to consider this the rent fund which is actually just going to be going into an account that you like a, a house saving account you can't touch it unless you're buying a house you could be putting you could be putting the money into that yeah you want to put this into your retirement and getting him a, a head start on life could really be beneficial for him in the long run. And it is your job. That, your job is to parent your kids. Your your job is not to put a only put a house over your their head and yeah. give them a, a free place to live. Your your job is to shape them into adults and teach them financials. How old is he? Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. He's almost. So he's going to be a legal I, adult. I, I would probably set it up like this. Like you have to be a little bit harsh as parenting, not harsh, but strict. I would set up like this. Listen, this is what I recommend. You're making this income. Great. That's good job. You still have to go to college. You still have to get a degree and stuff like that. If this is what you're doing in your spare time. Fully support you. Now, keep in mind, this whole studio, you're causing our electric bill to go up a little bit. So you're going to be yes. paying $50 per month yeah. towards the electric bill. That's going to be a sunk cost that I'm putting in the electric bill. Yeah. Here's where you have a choice. Like if you want to continue having all this stuff in your room using electricity, that's the requirement. You don't want it. I pull all the stuff out of your room because that is a privilege, not a right. All right. The right is having food and a a roof over your head, not all this entertainment. So that's the sunk responsibility, $50 a month. Here's where you have a choice. Option A, you can let me teach you about financing. We can, you know, consider that you're paying rent money and we'll put that into a locked in account where you can purchase a house in the future. You'll have a another percentage into your RSP for your retirement and then you'll have 20% left to spend off and invest into your business mm-hmm. and, and what you want to do with it you don't have to do that if you want all the money to yourself no problem but when you turn 18 
you will then be paying X amount for rent that you will never be getting back. I am going to be keeping that and paying off my mortgage with it. And if you're making all this money, feel free to move out onto your own. Kind of mm-hmm. like a harsh, harsh one. I, I do can, like that. I can soft teach you now while you're at home in 17 and we can set you up with these accounts to better, better your, your future. Because mm-hmm. he's 17. He's making money. He wants to spend money on whatever he wants to admit. Yeah. It's your job as a parent to coach them and teach them the proper way to spend money. Because you have no expenses. You're making $3,000 a month. You're going to be living like a god. You're going to be spending it. No, no remorse or anything like that it's your job to teach kids that you don't just spend all the money that you get yeah versus you don't want to do that okay i only have to support you till you're 18 you're you're turning 18 within 12 months i don't know exactly how old you are but at 18 if you want to go with option b and do it all on your own and don't listen to anything i say then you get to pay a thousand dollars a month in rent and it's never coming back to you yeah yeah exactly because your job as a parent isn't just to provide a house and heat and food and water it's to guide them to be adults themselves and you mm-hmm. need to help teach them financial responsibility just because you got there a little bit early doesn't mean that you can't help them out so I, I think that's my stance on it i'm open to other suggestions and everything but i think that's a pretty good stance of like no that was very well said you're optional if you want to do it but if you don't do it here's what's going to happen when i legally don't have to take care of you anymore yeah uh, you know what i mean like I'm only doing it to help you. Like $50 is coming for the electricity because you're, you have all this led lighting, you have all this extra stuff. That's sunk cost. Rent can go into a house fund for you in the future, Mm -hmm. buying your own apartment and stuff like that. So I feel like that's a really good balance. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Uh, top comment is you're the asshole at 17. He is a dependent and charging him rent is not okay, especially with the world as it is. He is lucky to have the chance to save and grow something you need to go look at the real world economics for young people face living with your parents until 30 plus is the new norm. It doesn't have to be the new norm for this kid. This kid can support himself. And the dad didn't say, I think you should pay rent because you're making money. He said, I want to put the money away for his future. I want to help teach him response, like future responsibility of finances. Mm -hmm. So I'm all on board with this dad. And I think that's the approach that he should go with. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. You're there to help shape and help your kids in the future. Not just put a roof over their head. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I think your approach is probably best um, best advice you could give. Yeah, you can't force the kid to do anything. You got to give them the option. Yeah. Be like, listen, I, I want you to succeed. Have a heart to heart with them. This is, the I think, the best thing for you. I want to help you learn this stuff. But at the end of the day, it's your decision. If you want to pay $600 a month in rent and you'll get it back towards your house, cool. If you don't, when you turn 18, you're moving out or you're paying rent here. And that's it. Yeah. All right. Nice. Next. All right. This one comes from Best of Redditor Updates. I am losing my fucking mind. I was never one to believe in paranormal shit or whatever, but I have no idea what the fuck is going on with me right now, and I'm genuinely considering seeking professional help. I live in a really small shared dorm apartment with two roommates. There's this hallway that if you face it, there are two bedrooms to your right, one bedroom to your left, and a closet at the end of the hallway facing you. The bedroom on the left is right next to the closet. When we moved in, my roommate always complained that they got a closet instead of a bathroom like me and my other roommate had in our rooms. This closet had a bunch of our shared stuff, including my clothes, gifts, keepsakes, whatever. Today, I got back from visiting my parents, and I came back to put away some clothes from this closet, but I opened it and saw a fucking bathroom. A bathroom with a toilet and a shower and everything. I was only gone for two days and we rent this place so it couldn't have been randomly built or some shit. I told my roommates but they fucking said it was always a fucking bathroom and they had no idea what the hell I was talking about. I can't find any of our stuff that was in the closet anymore even though I had shit ton of memorable keepsakes in that fucking closet. What the fuck? I spent all day sulking in my room feeling miserable. I am not crazy, but that bathroom was a fucking closet just three days ago. I feel like I'm losing my goddamn mind. I'm genuinely considering seeking a psychologist right now. Holy fuck. (laughs) Imagine coming to put something back in the closet. You're like a fucking toilet. 
Where the fuck did this toilet come from? Where's my shit? Where's the valuables that you put in the closet? <laughs> Bro, I know this is a prank. Where are the YouTube cameras? It's been two days. You could have renovated this bathroom in two days. Where are the cameras? What? <laughs> so what do, you, what do you think it is? It's a prank? I think I think it's a prank. I think they renovated it without telling her. In two days? In two days. It's, it's doable. Oh, yeah. It's doable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or she's actually losing her fucking shit. And, you know, it's a sane asylum stuff going on here. Yeah, maybe. Mandela effect. Okay. Short update here. All right. Update. I have a brain tumor. <laughs> oh, my God. What? Why are you laughing? <laughs> Stop laughing. That's messed up. That's messed up. Okay, yes, but it's just so funny. <laughs> she... Holy fuck, this poor lady. I'm thinking of getting a psychiatrist. No, you need a surgeon. Thank God she thought it was a closet. Thank God they found out she had a brain tumor. How did they go to that conclusion? She go to a therapist first and they're like, <gasps> we're going to get an MRI scan on you or whatever it is that scans the brain. Holy fuck. <laughs> crying oh my god you need a surgeon is wild <laughs> i'm shell shocked oh my god when i read this one i was crying laughing oh my god this one was also on the best of redditor updates like the I'm top not laughing this is well, sad well, okay yes it's sad but it's just funny because she <laughs> she was going <laughs> oh she was going crazy no ma'am you're not going crazy you have a brain tumor you're fucking dying <laughs> top comment this post just made me feel like I got slapped in the face. Just a sentence, the nothing. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. I wasn't expecting that. No, I, really I was not expecting that. I was expecting a prank. Yeah. Another comment. I like reading Glitch in the Matrix because I find it kind of morbidly fascinating and eerie. But, like, everyone in the comments insisting it's a glitch before the girl ends up having a brain tumor is so absurd. There needs to be a healthy dose of skepticism and subs like that. Like, maybe let's suggest some medical testing before immediately assuming someone is in the Matrix. LMFAO. You know, next time somebody talks to me about this, the first thing I'm going to do is, you might have a brain tumor. <laughs> Go get an MRI scan or something. That's not instantly what I'm going to go to when somebody tells me Mandela effect is happening or something is happening like that. I need a psychiatrist. No, you need a surgeon. Go check to see if you have a brain surgeon. tumor. That's wild. Oh my God, that is wild. I hope this girl is okay. All right, moving along. This one is a recent one from four days ago. It already has 12,000 upvotes. All right. Am I the asshole for going to my birthday dinner? Without my husband, because he wasn't ready on time. Mm. It was my 40 female 40th birthday a few days ago, and we had a reservation at a nice restaurant for 7 p.m. It takes about 20 minutes to drive to the restaurant, so I plan to leave the house at 6.30 to build in some time in case traffic was bad. I also had to pick up my father. My husband, 43 male, had decided to do a bit of work on his car about a half an hour before we needed to leave. At 6.30, when the kids and I were waiting by the door, he was still working on the car. He hadn't changed and hadn't showered. I told him to quickly get ready, but it got to be 6.50 and he still wasn't ready yet, so I decided to just leave without him. He has a habit of always running late when we go out and he is always the last one to be ready. Normally, I can tolerate it since it only sets us back by about 10 minutes at the most, but my birthday dinner was important to me and I had been looking forward to it for weeks. Making us wait 20 minutes was taking the mick, so I yelled that we were leaving and left because I didn't want to lose the table since we would arrive at 7.20. Mm -hmm. I called the restaurant and I let them know we would be late and luckily they still had our table. But my husband never even showed up to the restaurant, and when we got home, he was mad at me. I told him that I was tired of him not respecting my time and always making people wait on him, and that he could make his own way to the restaurant. My father agreed with me and my decision to leave without him, but my kids were a little upset that he wasn't there to have dinner with us. So, am I the asshole? No. Easiest no ever. I hate people who do not respect other people's time. Because it's like... It's my fucking birthday. Exactly. And you had to do this last minute to work on the car. You knew we were going to the birthday dinner. Why would you even start working on the car? People like that make me think like they have brains of like 
10 year old it just shows how little you care yeah you're you're not respective of anyone's time you don't care you literally don't care it pisses me off because like stuff like this like really bothers me when people are late or if they don't communicate shit like when they're late like that makes me so upset and then like getting ready last minute like that exactly makes my blood boil makes makes my blood boil too yeah like no. i wouldn't have even waited till 6 50 i would have been no. like it's 6 30 i told you this is the time to leave you're wrenching on your car yeah. you need to shower and all of that stuff we'll meet you at the restaurant hurry up yeah no i will see you there no yeah you're capable of getting there yeah exactly no i would have been livid yeah if w- this was me i would have been so pissed yeah top comment not the asshole you were already late when you left if you yeah. waited any longer you wouldn't have had a table and thus no birthday party when you got home you should have torn him a new one for deliberately trying to sabotage your birthday party yeah. put him on the defense where he should be for his behavior really though when your husband decided to do some work on his car you should have said no you're not doing that you're going upstairs to get ready to leave with us this was a totally predictable problem Mm -hmm. in general you should stop tolerating his lateness when you do that it gets worse not better there's a comment that says husband used to be on time op was a stay-at-home mom and this started when she went back to work husband is still never late to work or any of his own events my conclusion this behavior is not related to adhd or anything similar his lateness is deliberate enemy action hmm something i got some issues going on there but fuck this guy man what a dickhead no, I wouldn't be able to live with this, live with a person like this, because I would be angry all the time. Yeah, I would be pissed if you're making me late all the time with everything. Like, come on. Yeah. And like the fact that she has to like tell him to get up and get ready. That's beyond infuriating. Why do you have to baby him? He's yeah. a grown ass man. There's Why a... do you have to tell him it's time to get ready when you know? Exactly. Like you started, why would you even start, you going to start to work on your car just shows how little you're thinking about your wife on her birthday. There was one uh, interesting OP comment to uh, a comment or interesting OP reply. The comment was, as a man and an introvert, this might actually be quite a weight off his, sol- uh, off his shoulders. OP says, We go out as a family maybe every other week, and he doesn't get dragged anywhere. He agrees to everything I suggest, and I have made it very clear in the past that he's not up for something, then there is no pressure for him to come join us. We don't do everything together, and couple time, as you put it, happens even less. My husband has no problem facing social situation. His job has a big social factor, and he loves it. He also goes to a very busy pub with his friends every week and looks forward to it. The problem is not needing time to himself. He has plenty of time to himself. The problem is the lack of respect and disappointing his children. Even if he is an introvert, being late for his mother-in-law's funeral and not showing up to his wife's birthday celebration after she has said how important it is to her is inexcusable. Wow. Late to his mom's funeral? Sounds like a divorce is coming. No. Yeah. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I would leave him. Yeah. I'm an introvert. I'm literally never late to things. Being an introvert usually usually means that you have anxiety. And anxiety means that you are early to things. At the end of the day, it's just disrespectful that yeah. you know you're supposed to leave at 6.30 and you're going and you're still working on your car. Like, Yeah. I would throw a wrench at him. <laughs> I would. I'd see him working on his car. He's underneath the car. His legs are out. Wrench. 21 millimeter wrench right to the nuts. Right to the nuts. Right to the nuts. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. No, that's Physical inexcusable. Violence. Yeah, I would. It's inexcusable. He's an asshole. Yeah. Yeah. No, he sucks. All right. Okay. This one comes from Best of Redditor Updates again. Me, 26 female, with my boyfriend, 27 males, sister, 28 female, filled my yard with gnomes. I got rid of them after two months. Boyfriend is furious. I am not sure what to do. My boyfriend's sister, Chrissy, pulled a prank on me two months ago. She left about 50 gnomes in my front yard. No warning. They were just there. I called people up and asked them, but no one would tell me. I guess this is part of the prank. I fucking had no clue what was going on. Eventually, the kids in the neighborhood started picking them off, so I brought them inside my garage. Two of them were pretty cute, so I cleaned them up and put them in the house. 
I waited for someone to come clean, but no one did. After three weeks, I decided it was I was just going to donate them. A few friends asked if they could have some and I let them. I started giving them to people who commented on one being interesting or cute. I told my boyfriend about my army and he laughed. I thought he might have done it, but he said he honestly didn't, so I believed him. Well, he went on a four-week trip with his family to Europe. I got a few emails from him, but we were both busy. I went on a trip myself for work and for pleasure. So when he got back, he asked how the gnomes were treating me and I let him know most of them had found new homes. He got really silent and asked how many I had left. I told him 10. He asked who took them and said we needed to get them back. I was confused. It had been two months and the gnomes were kind of a funny story, but I don't remember everyone who took one, let alone the kids who picked 10 off the lawn. He then told me that they belonged to Chrissy, who thought I had just stored them in my garage, which is why she didn't pick them up before the trip. Chrissy is his sister. Apparently, Chrissy has been pulling the gnome army prank for years, and I am the bitch who gave away her army. My boyfriend is furious with me and asked why I would do that. I told him he should have come clean and I would have just kept them in my garage for her to pick up later. He said it wasn't how the prank worked. He said he needs to rethink the relationship. He wants me to get them back as they are dear to Chrissy. Chrissy doesn't know yet. I am not sure what to do about this. I had a few people offer to return their gnomes, but the rest of the people said they gave them away to so-and-so and and didn't know where they were now. This is such a surreal situation and I have no fucking clue what to do about it. I don't see how I was wrong, but I feel bad. So what can I do? Break up with him. (laughs) Like, okay, it's a funny prank. It's absolutely hilarious. It is. Sounds like she had it in good humor. It was so funny. The only part that's going wrong here is that the boyfriend knew, didn't come clean about it. Two months go by. The gnomes, the prank, it's over. Yeah, it's old now. It's old. What's happening with the gnomes and everything like that? It is your fault That the gnomes got picked off. What do you think was going to happen? She was just going to keep 50 gnomes in her fucking garage forever? Exactly. You're delusional. You're out to lunch. And he needs to rethink your relationship. I would be like, I'm rethinking it at this very moment. Me too, yeah. You rethinking it is a red flag to me. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're done. And take your fucking gnomes. Like, bro, you don't go around giving your gnomes away that you have 100% intention. What if someone took it badly and they just decided to smash all of them? Yeah. Like, you... Our understanding that these gnomes may never come back. That's what happens when you pull pranks. And pranks are short term. It's been two months. Two months is so ridiculous. Two months, bro. She asked you. It's been two months. Yeah. There's an update. Oh, thank God. I haven't read. I hope it's a breaking up. (laughs) I decided to bite the bullet and talk to Chrissy. I brought the gnomes I had to her house and knocked on the door. Chrissy's mom answered and asked me in. I was tired of the immaturity in mind games. My boyfriend has been sending me threatening, get me more gnome bitch type texts. I would fuck him up. I could see a lot of red flags or red hats if you are so inclined. (laughs) (laughs) I wanted Chrissy to have her nose back, so I just got it over with. When I handed Mrs. Mom the open box, she asked where I got these. She seemed really upset I even had them. I told her the story. Pretty much what I said in the last post, but with some more detail. Her reply was, Joe had been telling a totally different story. It's all the boyfriend. She seemed really hurt about the whole thing. And while I wanted to make a quick getaway, I was fucking curious. Blah, 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 dot, dot, dot. Mrs. Mom told me a little bit of background. I'm not going to repeat everything she said because some of it is sad and pathetic and a little too dark for my post about a gnome invasion the fuck a gnome army belonged to chrissy's late boyfriend steve steve and chrissy used to put them in people's yards and then demand another member for their army so the gnomes came from people steve and chrissy knew over a period of five years steve passed away chrissy stopped the gnome pranks and put them into storage she has not pulled the prank in almost two years now but freaks out if someone mentions getting rid of the gnomes or even moving the boxes I felt like an asshole, but Mrs. Mom thanked me for bringing some of them back. She did say the annoying line, you should have kept them even if you didn't know who they belonged to. She did say she was going to replace the gnomes in the boxes with the other ones and hope Chrissy didn't notice. 
Not sure this is a smart idea. She said she wanted to believe me, but that it's likely the last time she would want me in her house. Gee, thanks. I said that was fine. I had no intention of staying in a family who pulled weird pranks, then blamed the victims. One bridge burned. I mean, I understand she is likely upset because Chrissy apparently doesn't handle any mention of Steve well. She is likely going to be upset and never speak to the person at fault again, which is likely me. How I got them out of storage unit three hours away, the mystery will likely haunt their family for years. I don't understand. I'm trying to understand the last part. Of the storage unit? Yeah. Well, the boyfriend didn't... So, from what I understand, the boyfriend took his sister's gnome prank, I would imagine with good intentions of trying to get her out of her depression um, and prank a new person with it, didn't tell her about it, denied that he did it to his girlfriend, and then the girlfriend started giving him away, but he told his family that the girlfriend went and took him out of storage without mm. him. Okay, I see. Why would anybody even believe him? Yeah. Why would your girlfriend randomly go to the storage locker to pull up the gnomes that she didn't never knew existed? Yeah, literally. Okay, got it. Uh, There's a bit more. As for my now ex-boyfriend, I went to his house and asked him why he pulled the prank. His answer was stupid and telling, I don't know. He wouldn't answer me and he wouldn't tell me what was going on. He just said he wanted to do something cute. Then it got out of hand and he thought I would keep them. Something about having his own little secret made him happy. I got my things from his room and left. I told him about our mutual friend, Jake, who would bring his stuff by at a later time. Jake agreed to this and said Joe's story was bullshit. I guess Joe told me I got the gnomes out of storage unit and put them in the yards to get attention. That totally makes sense. I guess it was spiteful to do, but I did send Chrissy a message on Facebook. Chrissy, I don't think we will be friends after this. I know you want to believe your brother, but I did not take your gnomes. I did not know why they were in my yard or even that you had them. Please understand I would never aim to hurt, steal, or take from you. Your brother admitted to putting them in my yard, though I had no idea why he did it. I got an okay back, then she blocked me. I blocked Joe and his family. I am not sure what to do now, but it has been a really interesting few weeks for sure. What a roller coaster. Yeah, block them all. Block them. They're sick. That's fucked up. I was so, it's honestly, like going back like that's so cute that chrissy and her boyfriend did that it's a funny prank <laughs> yeah, and then cute. after the person's like what the fuck they're like we'll take him off for yard but you need to add a little soldier to our <laughs> family and then their soldier is built from people that they know like that's a heartwarming funny harmless prank it's yeah. harmless it's funny it's a prank i could stand behind it's a prank i can <laughs> stand behind as long as they took responsibility for it, like after like a day or two yeah that is funny it sounds like her boyfriend passed away. She's been depressed. They've been in storage. I would imagine the brother had good intentions for his sister. Didn't know what exactly he was doing with it. Or he's just a piece of shit. But like had good intentions, I think, maybe to help her with the prank and stuff. Or but flip side, he is just a piece of shit. Because why would you take the gnomes out of your sister's stores? They weren't yours. Yeah. You put them on your girlfriends. You don't tell you her anything it about it two for months. two months and then when she's like yeah okay it's finally time it's to kind of, clear out and get rid of them it kind of sounds like sabotage like i don't know like he wanted to blame the girlfriend and then just blames reason. her to his family and stuff it's like you're delusional yeah I want no part of it and then going to drop him off to his mom like returning them and his mom being like i don't think i want you in that house more like bitch I didn't fucking I don't do even this. want to come here. I don't want to be here. And I didn't do this. You yeah. think I went to a storage locker and pulled the gnomes out? You don't think this was all your son's fault? Like, how yeah. am I having anything to do? I didn't know he's even existed. I'm the victim. I am the victim and stuff like that. <laughs> so it's like, good. Block them. Block them all. Yeah. Wow. That's that's a wild story. That's hilarious. Wild. Wow. I mean, yeah. Block them. Two months. Two months. You think I'm just going to put them in the garage? Like, bro. I would have smashed him. Yeah. Top comment. This prank works if it lasts about one day at most. And if the people who did come to clean and get rid of them of the gnomes right after. This is so odd. You know what would be really funny? What? Is if like they put them there at midnight in the middle of the night. And then the next day they're like, where the fuck are these gnomes? They're asking everybody for who the fucking <laughs> gnomes are. So, and then midnight or 2 a.m. the next day. They're you gone. Come up, you're, you take them back. <laughs> and then the gnomes are gone. You're like, hey. <laughs> Was there fucking gnomes there? Or did I have, a brain, didn't have a brain tumor? 
that would be the best thing or like yeah. or like put one gnome there and then like change it out every night with a different gnome like wait that's a different <laughs> guy that's a different gnome oh my god or like add one gnome a day like put a gnome in there and then like add another <laughs> and then gnome it just becomes an army but like if you're pulling a prank with gnomes like you have to be okay with it if they go in the garbage yeah exactly that's part of the exactly. prank he was pranking with things that weren't his. Yeah, that's he the issue. He was messing with some shit that he shouldn't have been messing with. And that's a red flag in itself. I wouldn't want a partner who's doing stuff like that. Yeah. Mm. I'm glad she blocked all of them. Mm, 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 mm. They're a weird family. Yeah. Get out. That is weird. All right. Well, we're almost out of time. So I've saved my best story for last. Ooh, okay. Let's hear it. Are you ready? I'm ready. Uh, Trigger warning for domestic violence on this one. This one is a recent one. It was from 12 days ago, 13 days ago. Am I the asshole for kicking my wife out of the house after she punched my mom in the face? What? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. I'm going to go out on a limb and say no. (laughs) Strap in because we're going for a ride. Damn. All right. My situation went from bad to worse in a matter of weeks, and I don't know where else to turn. I need to know if I was wrong. Possibly a validation thing, because my life is so fucking dumb right now. My wife and I have been together for eight years, and she just gave birth to our first and last baby two months ago. Up until my wife got pregnant, my mom loved her. I'm not sure what the fuck is wrong with my mom or why the switch happened, but after my wife first got pregnant, my mom started being very clingy to me and started avoiding my wife at all costs. She told everyone she wasn't excited for the pregnancy, etc. I threatened to go no contact with her when my wife was about seven months pregnant and after she snapped out of it for the most part and stopped being so ignorant. The comments 100% stopped, though she was still clinging to me. Now, a week ago, my mom, my sister, and my sister's husband, and my sister's daughter, who is 12, came over for dinner. I prepared the meal. Before my wife could eat anything, our daughter got fussy, so my wife excused herself to go feed the baby and to get her down to sleep. I thought I prepared enough, but apparently not, because my niece was still starving. She's 5'5 and 190 pounds. I haven't seen her in a year and she was not that size then. So I didn't exactly portion in an extra three helpings for a child. So it's on me. I apologized and I told her that I hadn't made any more and I offered her crackers. As I was putting my wife's portion in the fridge. After that, I just went outside with my sister's husband's to smoke a cigarette and shoot the breeze. Didn't think anything of it. But then I hear yelling from inside. When I walked in, my wife and my mom were screaming at each other. Apparently, my mom, who saw me put my wife's food away, gave my niece my wife's portion of the food. Oh. As I was walking inside, I heard my mom say, Looks like you can afford to skip a meal and (gasps) slap my wife's stomach. Oh my god, sorry. What the fuck? Mm-hmm. I'm shocked. I'm shook. I'm mad. Right? As soon as I get ready to step in, literally fast walking towards them, yelling, enough. My wife winds back and punches my mother square in the face and drops her. Oh, good. <laughs> the whole house went silent. Outside of my mom crying and holding her face. I tell everyone to get the fuck out. Immediately, everyone leaves and my wife just turns towards the counter and leans with her hands on the counter and face down, eyes closed. I look at my wife and say, you two, leave now. She says, really? She's crying at this point. I say, yep. She packs up her and the baby, and leaves. Wow. I text her that night and say, I just need space. I need to decompress and come to terms with what just happened. She doesn't respond to me. The next five days, I'm texting and calling, and I get nothing left on red. 
she shows up here today, eight days later, and hands me divorce paperwork and my baby and says, here, you have a bit to hang out while I pack. Where I'm breastfeeding, we can work out a visitation schedule that is either at your place or my mother's until she will take a bottle. I told her that's not what I want. Too I bad. don't want to separate. I just needed time to process her punching my mother in the face. She said, you needing time to process gave me time to process the fact that I refused to be in this situation any longer. I defended myself. I initially felt bad and remorseful, but you making me leave when I needed you made me see more clear. I'm done. I'm sorry for what I did, but there's no fixing this. She refused to speak to me at the rest of the time that she was there. My house feels so empty now, and I don't know what to do. Am I the asshole for making her leave after she punched my mom in the face? <laughs> that was fucking wild. I wasn't expecting that. Save the best for last year. I, I, so I, I will redact my initial <laughs> conclusion and say, yeah, you are the fucking asshole. Oh, huge. <laughs> huge yeah i was like good on her for sticking yeah. up for herself yeah for standing up for herself to that mother-in-law exactly yeah terrible it was probably like months of comments like that oh huge build up yeah exactly so it's and then she years just snapped of i never condone violence oh i do but <laughs> we know you do i do condone defending yourself if someone lays their hand on you give them hell and yeah. she, mother-in-law did. Yeah. She slapped her. Yeah. No, that's true. Like, mother-in-law did start at first. She slapped her stomach. That would be enough to set me off. Like, right hook. Yeah. Left hook, combo, uppercut. <laughs> no, but she just won and dropped her. Good. Yeah, that's so wild. And good for her. Yeah. So that's self-defense. Honestly, I, I don't know if it was self-defense. No, it is. But... Someone puts their hands on you. You hit them back. To stop them from being able to do it again. Who, who's to say that mother-in-law wasn't doing a combo with a left hook in there next? You don't know. Defend yourself. I don't know about that. But I think she was justified in her reaction. And mm -hmm. um, I also kind of understand the husband. I don't know if I'm going to get hate for this. I probably a lot of emotions in the moment like not knowing what just happened like your wife just punched your mom in the face yep so the initial reaction is probably like what the fuck just happened i just need time to think but here's the thing if you need time you leave you go check in with your mom yeah you make sure she's okay you have no right to kick your wife no, out of right. the house okay, fine. which is also kicking your baby out of the house you need space you leave that's yeah okay you're right you're right you're right i take that back um yeah he's the asshole yeah fuck him <laughs> i'm glad she ghosted him then fucking divorced him because yeah. you know what not only are you dealing with a fucking pussy who can't stand up for you but then you also have to deal with no. this crazy mother-in-law the, the fucking crazy sister-in-law and brother-in-law and whatever because those are shit parents who are also letting the mother-in-law take food for their fucking child and stuff yeah. like that who seems to be massively overweight you're yeah. 12 years old and you weigh 190 pounds yeah that's messed up yeah and then you're stealing food from the person who just had a baby who's stressed yeah postpartum 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 depression probably or who knows like stressed out needs her food needs her rest and all of this stuff just so many things on a level and then you have the audacity to kick her out yeah what did you think was gonna happen there is a little bit of an edit here okay let's hear it a pretty big edit oh <laughs> edit for the record i am team wife my mom deserved it wholeheartedly, and I've blocked her completely from my life. I literally just needed time to process what happened. My wife is a lot of things, but violent is not one of them. This came completely out of left field and would not have happened without her being provoked. After it all happened, my mom sent me a text saying, See, I told you, that bitch is crazy. That fat bitch doesn't belong in our life. Oh, I'm willing to bet she purposely tried setting my wife off. So no, 
I am on my wife's side 100%. I truly just needed to process what happened and my wife took it as me giving up on her, not defending her and throwing her and our baby out, which I did essentially because I knew she had to take the baby with her when I kicked her out. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly why the wife should be mad at you. Yep. Yeah, that's fucked up from the mother-in-law. Yep. Wow. And she's probably going to be like that with any of your future relationships. Oh, for sure. Honestly, you need to cut that relationship. Yeah, it sounds like you did, but a li- too little, too late. Yeah, yeah. Too little, too late. Should have stood up for your wife. Never in a million years would I ever kick you out. If I need space, I leave. Mm-hmm. You don't kick your wife and baby out of the house what the fuck is wrong with you you need space you leave there's another edit the reason why my dad was stupid abusive i was beat my sisters and brother were beat my mom was put in the hospital multiple times it took years for police to enforce restraining orders and he finally died in 2013 violence scares the fuck out of me I clam up and get anxious around violence of any kind now. My wife knows this, and she too grew up with a violent dad and stepdad, and she gets just as anxious and panicky about violence. Her punching my mom in the face triggered an anxious response, and I needed her gone in that moment. I needed it far away from me. I don't know why... I didn't just leave. I could have, but in the moment, I just let my emotions and fear run the whole fucking surface and told everyone to get out, including her. My mom did slap her first. I guess for some reason, I was just seeing my wife's punch. Okay. Well, that's all I have to read off of my nice, shiny, black, <laughs> new MacBook Pro. I like to announce when I get new things. I got a new MacBook for the podcast, for the editing. I've been editing for you guys in 4K, so I upgraded some hardware for the podcast there thank you guys so much for all the support i don't you don't have another story right Teresa? no i'm done we are done with no theme or theme to theme or not to theme the theme or not to theme it'll be in the title <laughs> Teresa came up with this so that's why i'm a little harder on it um we've made huge progress with our following so thank you guys yeah. so much our uh, podcast downloads on spotify and apple podcasts have been out of control youtube has been out of control uh, we're almost at 30,000 followers on Instagram. We might even be past this by the time this episode goes live. TikTok's a little bit slow. So if you guys are listening on here, go help us out on TikTok. But <laughs> thank you guys so much for the support. We, we've had some awesome user write-ins that we're going to be putting into a future episode. So if you guys have a story that you want us to read, um, throw it on the Thread Talk podcast subreddit. Send us an email. Send us a DM on something. Get in contact with us and we'll, be, uh, we'll make sure to put your story on a future episode. Yes. Teresa also has been working on a little something exciting for the podcast. For those of you who are watching on YouTube, you may see a change coming in the future of our background. Maybe on the next episode, we'll have an update for you guys on what's happening. So yeah. that's all we have on this Thread Talk Tuesday, unless Teresa has anything else for you guys. I wanted to say, please um, give us a like uh, or a five star on Spotify, Apple Podcast. Um, that will really help out our analytics. Yes, help us out because some people have given us a one star <laughs> yeah. for some reason. And I don't know why. I think two people gave us a one star. And we're like, what, what have we done wrong? I thought everybody loves us. We also take criticism. We do. We get but... a lot of criticism, actually. <laughs> you go read our comments I take it on Instagram. Personally, but. Teresa <laughs> reads every comment on Instagram and YouTube and TikTok. And yeah. she takes the criticism personally. But, um, but we know anybody who's listening to this part of our podcast. You guys are the true loyal supporters. So we yes. thank you guys. If you're listening to this, you made it all the way to the end. And we thank, thank you, you very so, much for coming so along much. for the ride. Yes. We're so appreciative for all of you. Thank you so much. Until next time. This has been Thread Talk Tuesday. Bye. Bye.